This is a demo of Blue Cell's new machining feature, which should be available in version 1.2. What this machining feature does is it will expand Blue Cell's role from just focusing on panel saws to also uh, systems like routers and point to points. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you in this demo is um, we're going to take a SQL database, uh, which is actually from an Insight ERP system and query it for a job, pull in parts from the job, and also have BlueCell load a preview of the machining files for each part. So in the preview, it'll show things like drill holes, horizontal drilling, uh, routes, mills, all the things that a panel saw wouldn't be able to handle, but a router or point-to-point -point system can. Now these uh, machining files um, are typically files like CIX, which is BSA's router format. Um, we also support DXF files, which is a, the generic router format. Usually those are non-standardized and contain multiple layers, but we hope to have a feature to map these layers so that a user, um, depending on how they have their DXF file set up, they can map which layers contain actual machining information and filter out uh, comments that aren't necessary for machining. Uh, we also will support NPR form, or excuse me, NPR extensions, which is the HOMAG wiki format, FMC, which is Copus NCAD, and FXM, that's the EMOS format, and also G code. In this example, though, I'll be showing the uh, CIX and uh, FXM import. Now, there are two ways that I can import. Uh, since I do have that database, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Import Parts button. This is actually a Python script that we've set up, and it's linked to our import module, Datalink. Just to show you what Datalink does, in case you don't know what that is, we'll come over to Import Export and click on Configure Datalink. Okay, I've got Datalink open, and you can see I've got a few different types of uh, imports set up already called Sequences. Uh, here's my SQL Insight sequence. I can open the SQL query. So all this does is uh, open up the query that we've or that I've written to query the database and map the uh, tables or the columns from each table to a blue cell column. And I've got the sequence or the query open. You can see here we've got um, some things like job ID mapped to user text six. Uh, job description user text three. We have grain, material, and so forth. Um, nothing or not everything needs to be mapped. I've only mapped the necessary ones, such so as cut length, cut width. And here down, if we at the very bottom, we have a parameter set up. Uh, this is so that every time I run this sequence or this uh, import, it will ask me for a job ID. So if you have, or if your database or ERP system, um, you need a job ID to access a certain job, you can just enter that and it'll pull in all the parts for that job. You can also link material to the job as well. Uh, here I have, this is set for import into a parts group. I can set up a material import, a separate one, to import this into sheets so that I don't need to have a material library in case your ERP system already maintains one. And this can also actually keep track of inventory as well. Now to return to my imports parts, uh, my import parts button, I'm going to go ahead and click that and enter in my job ID. So here I pulled in several parts. Now in the preview here, this is where you would see the image of the part, and it looks like this particular part that I have uh, open does not have any machining. Um, Blue Cell does draw these parts by itself, however if you associate a machining or router file for this particular part, it will actually load that instead. In this case it's the FXM file. So if I select a different part, you see here this actually loads the drill, uh, the drilling, and looks like there's some sort of router mill right here as well, this line. 
and also the toe kick as well in this separate part. And to show you where it stores the file path for the router file, Here we have it in external part ID, and this is the file path. So we loaded the FXM instead rather than just drawing a, a simple rectangle. Now it can do uh, shapes beyond a rectangular one. If we come here to this import parts group button, this will open a Windows navigation uh, to so that we can import a uh, FXM directly. Now, so this, since this was actually queried from a database, this is just to show you that if you only have a parts file and no other data source, uh, we, it'll actually load that data for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and import some additional parts. We'll pick the first three, and then put it in a several parts group. So you see here, it loaded the material for these parts. There are three different materials. I loaded the length and the width as well, as well as the associated FXM file with the machining. This one, it also loaded it correctly, where this actually is not a rectangle. It's got a bit of a slope to it. And the same for, as well for this particular part. So uh, it can also uh, load uh, irregularly shaped parts. And just to show you how Blue Cell can uh, import more than just uh, drilling and routes, I'm going to go ahead and import a CIX file. Uh, again, that is a BSA uh, rover or router format. You see here, this is a CIX file. Here it's loaded in its own parts group, and we have a Harley Davidson logo. So we can actually import, uh, excuse me, we can actually optimize all of these and use our block nesting algorithm so that you can either send this, uh, these jobs out to be cut at first a panel saw, uh, and then you can send it to a router or point-to-point -point system to do your machining. Or you can send the entire, uh, all the patterns to a router and have it cut out as well as do the machining at the same time. Either of those scenarios are possible with our nesting algorithm. I'm going to go ahead and remove these extra parts I uh, imported and just going to go with my original uh, SQL job. I already have materials loaded here. Um, I believe this uses three different materials. We can check that. We can break down the grouping. We see here we have three different uh, materials. And we can put that back. So under the sheets group, I've actually got some materials loaded. I also have a machine. This is actually set to Imperial right now. Even though it's using metric, we can just quickly flip that to metric to swap those values. Now to optimize, I'm going to go ahead and just click the optimize button. And now it's done. You can see the patterns here. And here you can also see that on the patterns, the parts still keep their machining information. Now all of these are just a quantity of one. So the yield, it doesn't fill out the sheet as well. If we increase the quantity, it should uh, improve the yield. And you can see we have some trapezoid parts here as well. So this can be a great solution if you don't have a nesting program and you want to uh, put, cut these parts out at a router, or if you wanted to do it separately, um, first a panel saw, then a router, uh, you can do that and you will also still keep your labeling information. So all the parts here, this information, all these various columns, I'm gonna name, description, um, we've got more text fields over here under the user text. You can still keep all of these so that your labeling information will still go with the parts as they go out to all these different machines. Now if I uh, post-process the job, uh, which is this button right here, it'll create these uh, the files necessary to run your machine, whether that's either a panel saw or a router. 
And also what's a really useful feature uh, in terms of labeling is uh, if there are instances where you keep your labeling information in a separate file uh, apart from your machining files, like for instance, your labeling information, like your assembly number or um, the product name, if that's in a CSV file, and your machining information is in an FXM file, and you want to actually have BlueSilk sort of combine these two data sources together, it, we can also do that. This can be done through DataLink. Uh, since DataLink, uh, you can take multiple sources uh, or multiple sequences it can run, uh, especially if you have uh, some sort of identifier between parts from the CSV file and to link it to the appropriate machining file. So that concludes our demonstration of the Blue Cell's machining feature. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. If you'd like to purchase Blue Cell, you can reach us at sales at yoursoftink.com. And if you have any questions about Blue Cell or um, if you need more information, you can also reach us at support at yoursoftink.com.